We here at Skybound have been having an absolutely great time adapting all of the fantastic characters of Summoner's War into animation. We're doing some really great stuff that we can't wait to share with you. I'm particularly excited about you guys seeing what we're doing with character Banyan, who is my absolute favorite. It's gonna be awesome. Not every property needs, you know, warrants every adaptation, but rather there's a strategy and you decide where you're going to start and work with them to maybe start with a comic book or an animated series or whatever makes sense. When they want to create a comic book, they reached out to us first. They were big fans of Invincible, knew Robert's work. Uh, so we met with them. The game was exciting, the type of world that we want to explore, so we started those conversations. Basically, Sean will then hand the baton to me to then develop the comic with the creative team together and, and bring it to life. Once we realized that there was uh, more business to be done outside of the comic book, that this world could be explored through other media, TV, film, it just made a lot of sense for us to partner up. So starting a new project, if it's an existing property, so I'll read everything that's been done about it as possibly can so I can just entrench myself. With Sumner's War, it's getting familiar with the game, understanding the world as well, and just sort of diving into understand the scope of it and then talk through what we need to do to bring it into something that is producible for television and film. I'm most excited to see Summoner's War as an animation. When I look at an animation, I get a deeper sense of connection and understanding only because it's playing in front of my eyes. Catherine, she has a passion and drive for the industry that is unlike any other. She lives and breathes animation. It is apparent in how she works. It's apparent in the projects that she produces. It's very contagious. Well, I do have, of course, a sweet spot for animation, <laughs> having produced a lot over the course of my career. So I'm very excited to start to see the characters come to life in animation. I said to the Come To Us team, one of the first things we need to do is find a cohesive approach to the visuals and a look and style that is sophisticated and something that we can use as the baseline from which to then adapt an animated show, a book, a comic book, merchandise. We needed something that was all consistent. And so I reached out to my long-term collaborator, Wilson Tang, to do that. What I do is help craft the larger universe around Summer's War. And that would include the animation, as well as any visual material that can be used for other products around this IP. We always tend to kind of focus on monsters that are a very key part of the game. For me, the most exciting part to come to life is when we start seeing the characters and how they evolve from their game characters to what we've brought them into for film and television. So we're trying to think about what's, what's the, the most incredible place that we can take this character. And even if it's pulling it away from, from the expectations of the audience. Because I think if we do a really good job and, and if we create an ensemble that, that together is irresistible for new fans and for existing fans. You want to communicate to an entirely new audience. If people know the property, that's great. We want to make sure we had characters that were good point of view characters, that had a good emotional arc. One of the things that I'm most excited about being completed is Taihan's backstory, Ragon Castle, and his monster. Right now we're pairing him with Dagora. Putting all those three things together, I just instantly, like I think that can be a show on its own. I just want to hang out with Taihan in Ragon Castle. And that's just mixing and matching kind of three different uh, uh, characters from like this huge list of characters. So there's two monsters that I was specifically working on. There's Akia and she's a succubus, a fire succubus, and Bernard who's a wind griffin. Bernard's base in the game was already fairly solid. Like he's just a big, he's a big griffin and he's got really cool armor on already. So it was quite easy to take that as a base and just sort of amp it up. And Akia, she, she was probably the one that changed the most. So she was wearing a little kind of leather number. Very tiny little bikini, didn't cover up much. She was like dangerous, but kind of cute still. The direction we ended up going for her was more, she ended up in a really cool like jumpsuit. So she's wearing this kind of like a leather cat suit. Quite astounding just how you can take that piece of art that exists and bring it into a whole new world. 